Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collecting. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about information sources. Now by information sources, I, you might say even say information resources, this, these are the places where I go to get information about a watch. Now when I see a watch uh, that I want, I really want it, but if I don't do any research on it, I don't know what's in it. And I could end up with um, something I really don't want. By the way, uh, today I have on my Patep uh, Philippe Calatrava 3468. And the uh, when I got this watch, I went to a lot of these different places and to find out about it, what, what was the movement, uh, what was the reputation, what should I look for, and so forth. So, let's get started with this. Now, one place that a lot of people, and especially the more experienced uh, watch collectors, may overlook, I've overlooked it, and I, I ran into it, and it has a lot of information that you might want to take a look at. It's called uh, www.watchwiki.net. And WatchWiki is, it, it has links to other resources. Now, some of those links go to the uh, home page of the product. And now they will have information, and but they'll just give you the information they want you to have. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look at some of the places that may give you a bit more information. Uh, first of all, we're going to take a look at the uh, uh, place is sort of my go-to place. It's called WatchBase.com, and while it's got a lot of stuff, there's there's a lot of stuff missing for it. None of these places, none of these resources have everything I want, but uh, a lot of them have a lot of stuff that are very helpful. Now, this one, uh, let's say that you're interested in a uh, Tag Heuer. Uh, Monaco 24 McQueen. Okay, now that sounds like a honey of a watch. It's uh, the brand Tag Heuer, uh, and there, it's got a uh, caliber reference 36 in it. And, I mean, not a reference, but a caliber 36. What's what's the thing sitting on? Well, in, at watch base, they'll tell you. And the base of this is a Zenus El Primero 400. Now, it turns out that the, the Zenus El Primero uh, 400 is like having a really, really good uh, a base to your movement. It's not like getting some, un, you know, some of the, some of the stuff that, uh, that comes out of the, some of these Swiss uh, gear labs um, without mentioning any names. Okay. Uh, this particular one is is an automatic. So th this is and and they have things and they don't have things here. I mean, you'll be for the watch you're looking for. They may not have it or they may not have the caliber for it. Okay. Uh, the this next place um, that I that I use is a, a a place where you go and you have uh, you have to subscribe to it. It costs. Um, I think 15, 10 or 15, <coughs> excuse me, 10 or 15 euro a year. And to me, it's worth it. But I, I, I got to tell you, it's, while it's, it's really good for a lot of things, you, you got to watch it because, you know, sometimes I think is that, you know, the guys who, who have this site, I say, oh, I got a date tonight. And they ask the babysitter, hey, could you do the rankings on this? Oh, all right. <laughs> you know, it's like they're crazy. There's some stuff that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, other stuff, it does. So uh, let's take a look at some things that, uh, and, and this came up when I was looking for my GMT. Okay, uh, the first place I went, uh, I was looking around, and I found these watches that looked pretty good. They were uh, Bremont, and they had, uh, they had GMT. Uh, one was called Zulu, and that's close to my heart as a former pilot. And they had another one. It's just gorgeous, 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 called the Terra Nova. And so, uh, oh, this looks like a neat watch. Now, the thing I like about this site, uh, so these are all rated 80. Now, they consider 80 to be 
sort of the base for your top knot stuff. Anything reaching a niner or greater, according to them, is is just one of the best watches in the world. Okay, so an 80, they say, boy, that's one that you really ought to pay attention to. So here they had all of these guys were, were rated 80. So I thought, oh boy, uh, this ought to be pretty good. All right, so uh, then I went and I looked at it. The, uh, here's one of those three, uh, Boeing Model 1 GMT. And uh, then I get the base, it's got an ETA base. I said, wait a minute, here you're, you're rating this thing as... A high horology watch. I can see a 75 or something, but an 80 for for something that's got a ETA in it. And the other two watches also had one had a Valjou and the other one had an ETA. Okay, uh, so I, I was thought, well, you know, maybe that's the way they do things. So I thought, well, I'll take a look at a couple more. Uh, and uh, here's the uh, GMT uh, Master II, uh, Pepsi, and the Explore II. Now, these were two more GMTs that were on my list, and they were also ranked 80. But, but <laughs> they're, you know, they're comparing it. Hey, they have their own in-house movement, and only an 80 for that compared to those other ones. You know, so this is where you start saying, wait a minute here, you know, this is, these things were ranked when the babysitter was doing them. Okay, uh, so we take a look at the Explore. Now, the Explore is, uh, boy, they say they really like one, that's their choice. And so they have, it the, they have a little choice thing at the bottom, and then they have a TWE's Merit, uh, meaning it's a really good watch, uh, horologically speaking. Now... It was interesting that the other, the ones from Braemont, none of them had that, uh, they, but they did have a thing saying this is a good buy. In other words, they were inexpensive. And I would think, how in the world, because there's some other ones, well, I'll take a look at what I'm talking about, that are lower rated and, and they're pretty far superior. Um, let me give you an example. Uh, the Sea Master, Master Planet Ocean 600M, a meter GMT, another one that was on my list, a honey of a watch. They rated that 73. They rated this watch 73, and it has a caliber 8906, which is an Omega caliber, and it has the 15,000 uh, Gauss <laughs> uh, uh, escapement, and it had the new Matus certification. And that thing is is rated below uh, something that's cranking on a, on an ETA or a Valju. So th this is one of the things that I, I think that the ratings I I have they, they don't make any sense. Uh, this is it is an English site and Bremont is guess what English. So maybe they got a little <laughs> little nationalistic lift. I don't know what it was. And I love, by the way, I, I, I love the looks of those Bremonts. They're beautiful watches. Uh, I feel the same way about uh, uh, Ball and Ross. And there are some other ones I absolutely love, but they, they're, in terms of high horology, uh, you better have a really low price if you're saying, well, this is high horology and you're going to get a I, it's, so anyway, this is a site. The good thing about the site, and that's why I subscribe to it, uh, they have a uh, <laughs> they have they have a lot of information about the watch's movement and some of the other things about it. Uh, now, this is my favorite. Uh, I sub like I said, I subscribe to it. I pay for it, and and uh, <laughs> I end up screaming at it. You know, how can you say that? <laughs> okay, let me give you one more example. The Series 1974 is is a watch that I just love, and it is by um, Christian Christian Vanderklaus. Uh, one of the other ranking sites that we have rate Christian Vanderklaus as an ultra high high uh, rating, and these guys give it a 60, a 60 for crying out loud. Um, when we look at the uh, base caliber. It's got a CVD uh, 1068, which is an in-house Christian Vanderklau movement for Celestial. And they have the big thing about this watch is a, uh, a, um, a moon phase. 
And they have the best, probably the best moon phase, the best uh, any kind of celestial kind of movement of any watch anywhere. And they give it a 60. Here they give it a <laughs> I have a wait a minute. Well, that's because it's got a, a Soprod A10. Now, Soprods A10s are, aren't that bad, and they're certainly no worse than an ETA. But uh, I, you know, you see stuff like that, and then you have, and then they have things like here are the pros and cons. Is that they like the price? Uh, moon phase is adjusted by the crown. They thought that was important. Now they have no luminous material on the dial, so you can't read it in the dark. Okay, um, the uh, they have that on ninety percent of the watches they don't like. <laughs> they just put that one on there, and then they have the case design, especially the lugs lacks a little bit of refinement, whatever that means, and then they say it's too conservative. Uh, so you, you have to you have to weigh those things. The good thing about it is that it. It kept me from running out and paying too much for one. <laughs> I'll say that much for it. Okay. Uh, now, my favorite go-to place is, is still the uh, Grand Prix, the Oral OG de Genève. The uh, G, let's see, what is it? Grand Prix, gphg.org. Okay, so uh, let me run through a thing that I do. There's, you have a lot of participants. Okay, so here are all of the, I think these are from last year, from 2015. These were all of the, uh, the watches that put a watch up to be considered in the uh, Petite Aguille. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of them there. And then they, and then this next, they have what's called the short list, or I call the short list. They have six watches that are the final contenders. Now, if you're looking at these six watches, you got six watches that have been picked by top designers and watchmakers every place off the world. So you got six watches there that are pretty good. Uh, and uh, this was the, uh, one of them was the uh, uh, Harboring Two. Uh, the Felix, which I, uh, is one of the ones I got. And one of the reasons I got is that it's, it's, uh, I had this information. It's really a good, um, a good watch. Now, one of the watches this year that they have is a Tudor uh, Pelagos. And what you can do, if you go there, you, you click on the, the picture of the watch. Either, you know, it doesn't matter whether they're finalists or they were just entries. And they will have all this information about it. Now, this information is provided by the watch company itself. And so they can be very vague. And when it comes to movement, that's where they get very vague. Now, in this case, the uh, Tudor uh, Pelagos, they have their own movement. They say so. And in the, you can see it. Well, you can't see it probably. But in the, in the writing of it, uh, if you go to the website, uh, the gphg.org website, uh, you'll you can go through all that information. So if you want to find out about a watch. Now, as I said before, Rolex doesn't enter anything into this. So you can't really find out much about it. And uh, Vasseron Constantine and Patek Philippe, they stopped entry for who knows why. But they did. And so as a result, uh, there's not a lot of information on them. The, the good thing about this is that you can find out choices that have been made by really talented and smart watch people. These aren't salesmen, they're not hucksters. Uh, and I, I love going to Chrono 24 to look at stuff, but <laughs> let's face it, the description by the person trying to sell it to me, you know, isn't exactly horological truth. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Okay, um, this uh, this next place I found, uh, watchrankings.com, I was, uh, it was on Archie's uh, channel. Archie said, oh, this is a great place. So I thought, well, I'll go check it out. And um, what they have, they have a hierarchy and they have what they call rankings. And they have five different rankings. They have the uh, ultra luxury watches, the high end luxury watches, the luxury watches, the basic luxury, and the entry luxury. Well, it turns out I got one from each category. <laughs> the uh, at the ultra high, uh, they have an El Lara that they're showing up there, and uh, they have a you know FP Journe and some other ones like that. And and then they have the criteria uh, for why they put it in that category. 
and it's the cost and the history and some other kinds of things and the ultra high uh, they have some of those now in the next level level what they have four stars you, you either get five four three two one stars or you, you get none <laughs> and they're, they're sort of out of it uh, and then if they like it uh, they put a little heart next to it anyway uh, and then they have it divided the top part is Swiss watches and the bottom part is everybody else uh, so yeah you know and oh by the way too and and here uh, Christian van der Klau is one of the ultra high watches that the watch enthusiasts gave a 60 to. Like I said, what do they have? They're, the guy mowing their yard say, hey, when you get a break, come on in and do some rankings for it. I don't know where they're getting some of this stuff. Anyway, um, they show an L. Laurent. Now, in there, they, they, they have it listed as Laurent, not L. Laurent. And that's because in 2015, uh, they changed it from El Dorado to Raw. I don't know why, but they decided to do that. And so uh, you, most of the watches around still say El Dorado, or at least a lot of them do. Mine does. Okay, um, so this is another place. Watch rankings. You can, you can go see uh, how many stars your watch has and whether they love it or not. Okay, uh, the, the last uh, place, and I'm not saying this is the last place to look, but there are a lot of different um, forums. Boy, I tell you, if you got a Rolex, you're lucky because, man, those Rolex guys <laughs> talk about their watches until the cows come home. I, I, anything you want to know about a Rolex, there's some guy out there who spent half a lifetime trying to find out about it. And so that's a, that's a really good resource. You know, these guys, this is what I think about it. Now, sometimes they get into food fights and mm, things like that. Uh, some companies have their own forum. Uh, the best one, I think, by a mile is the Hour Lounge that uh, 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 Vacheron Constantine has. That is really good. They do, they'll throw you off if you're, if you get nasty. <laughs> one guy called everybody a liar and he got tossed. So he, he, it, I mean, one expects decorum with uh, in the Vassaro and Constantine crowd. But boy, they have tons of good information there. If you want to find out about Vassaro and Constantine, take a look at that site. Okay, uh, these are some of the resources that I think you're going to find useful. And I, I hope you, you you take a look at them. And uh, if and also what I hope you say, hey, wait a minute, how come you left out this place? This is a really good place. Okay, you're right. Put a comment in and, and let me know. Say, hey, yeah, this is a great site, man. You missed this one. Also, too, I downloaded the uh, ETA's uh, PDF file with all of the ETA's on it, uh, all of the all of the the uh, movements they make. And they have some other things like that that you can go after. By the way, I'm putting links to all of these up on my uh, on the Watch Art Side website. So take a look there. You can find them there too. Okay, this is a little longer than I thought. So I will end it. Uh, if you if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to join our our our, our brave few, uh, go ahead and subscribe. I'd uh, love to have you, uh, and I love to have comments. Okay, that's all for now. See you next Friday. This is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side.